Hey there guys, Portalmaster9351 here. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing with you um, my personal thoughts on the plot line of the light and dark elements. So, if you haven't seen my backstory video where I talk about the backstories, go watch that one. And excuse the congestedness, I have a bottle of water here in case I need it. Um, but if you haven't seen the backstories when you either need to read them or go watch the video, preferably watch the video. But anyways, now I'm going to begin. So, as you guys know, <clears throat> sorry, um, when Chaos blew up Cloudcracker Prison, he released, um, the light and dark elements being Nightlight, um, Spotlight, Nightmare, um, Blackout, Luminous, Nightshade, and then the six other regular Most Wanted villains. So, a couple of questions arise. If the villains were released because the prison blew up, because it was Traptanium, and the light and dark elements, elemental characters, were freed from another realm... Does that mean that the light and dark villains were in Cloudcracker, or does it mean that they were in another dimension, such as with the light and dark Skylanders? That question arises. The next question is, well, how do they get into that realm? They obviously couldn't have just been there to begin with, because what it says is, it broke Skylands apart. That's what caused it. But... That would imply that they were somewhere in Skylands, but it says another dimension, so it's a bit confusing. Now, if you've read the backstories, you know that the Core of Light caused them to disappear. They must have been around before the Core of Light exploded, um, and they disappeared. Why did they disappear? I don't know, and that's this is all so curious. It's I, I really think that this is what they're going to base Game 5 off of. I really think that. Um, they've got a lot of lore going, and there's just some some little loopholes that need to be filled in. Like, I mean, it. why? Why did they disappear when the Core of Light, you know, exploded? And supposedly, the Core of Light had every element, but it must not have if it, had, if it didn't have light and dark. But then comes the question, well, maybe it did have light and dark. Um, and when it got blown up, they, the, not only the Skylanders went out of existence, but the items did as well. Or the items got destroyed, and those were what were allowing, um, them to be somehow, they were like their portal or something, I don't know, and they like disappeared. It just kind of raises the question of why was the destruction of the Core of Light responsible? Now, if there were two cores, the core of light and the core of darkness, and one was for light and one was for darkness, and then the light blew up and all the light element went out and the dark element blew up and all the dark elements went out, <coughs> that would make a lot more sense. But no, the core of light. And I don't quite understand why that would affect both. Um, they must be tied together somehow because they counter each other. So how are they tied to each other? Well, they both disappeared, and they both resurfaced at the same time, and they're both complete and total opposites. So they're connected by not being connected in that opposite fashion, but you know, it's just kind of an interesting thing to think that they're, they're so different but related at the same time. Um, so what I think is going to happen in the next game is we're going to end up with an Elder Elemental, a.k.a. a giant for the light and dark. Because it doesn't say that the light and the darks weren't around before or it uh, during that time. It doesn't say that they were ever manifested or created, um, which would also allow for swappers. Because you know that the volcano in Swap Force erupts every 100 years. And so, the present day was when this eruption was. So, the Swappers were created a hundred years ago. So, if... I don't know the exact storyline. I don't know when the Core of Light was blown up. But say this is now, and this is when the volcano erupted. I would think Core of Light would be about here. I would think this would be pre-SSA, SSA, Giants, 
and then we have Swap Force right here, and then we have Trap Team right here. So I would think that there's a good chance that the light and dark elements could have been present at that time with the um and been part of the uh, the the team that went out to the volcano um and then got blown apart and somehow that could have banished them somehow i don't know or something's up with the core of light i think because guys it's not complete i mean you know that's it, it's not complete. In, in no way, shape, or form is the core of light complete. You, you just know. And you also can think, and like I said in the last video, there's 18 Skylanders in every element. In unique Skylanders. Uh, not like reposes or anything, but there's 18 unique Skylanders in every element, except light and dark, where there's two. Every other element has 16 guys on them. Now, why would Activision... Now, this is a philosophical question. Why would they spend almost three months, well, two, two and a half months, concealing this from us, only to do it in one game? Is that not a bit, is that not a bit, is that not a bit interesting to think about? Why would they? Well, they are either going to try, they're going to try to do one of two things. It somehow ties in with the next game. Either they're giving us a hint about it, or this is what they're really going to do. This is light and dark, and they're trying to get us to go this way, and what they're really doing is going this way. It's kind of, they may be sending us on a wild goose chase, or they could be giving us a hint as to what's coming next. Now, the other thing that I pointed out is that now that they've added new elements, they are they have proven that there are not merely eight elements. <clears throat> Sorry. Elements. Give me one moment, please. <clears throat> they have proven that they can add more elements. Now, I'm not expecting there to be 18, you know, light and dark Skylanders. That would require 16 new ones. Like, a giant, two swappers, and then 13 cores. Now, I'm not expecting that. But I'm expecting... I'm expecting more of them than I think anything else. And I really bet that... What I think is that they're going to be giving the game back to its roots, but I'm going to talk about that in a totally different thing, about what I think about the next game, because I'm currently assembling that. But I just think that overall, it's a very, very curious story arc. Like, I mean, where were the light and dark villains is my ultimate question, and why have we not heard of them? Why has Eon not told us about them? And the answer to that is, I don't think that Eon knows, if, if you know what I'm saying, he doesn't know, you know, to progress, to progress the storyline as a whole, he doesn't know. And I think that that could be a major point that's going to drive the storyline on through Skylanders. As you know, I mean, it's just... A lot of people in the forums have been saying that we're going to go back to the roots because, like, I saw a gif or a gif or whatever you want to say of the Pink Panther and some painter dude, and they had a pole. The Pink Panther had pink paint, and the painter had blue paint, and they were painting over each other's paint. And they said, if this is sort of what Skylanders is doing, if they continue to um, release more gimmicks. And I kind of agree. <clears throat> but... Activision's a mastermind. They know what to do. They are rich people. They're not going to let that happen. And so they're going to throw the game back to its roots in a new way. Light and dark. Sorry, light and dark. It's, it, it just, it seems strange. I think, above all, strange to, you know, strap them on to the end of this game. Does that not weird a few people out that they would put this at the end of the game? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Why make a game about trapping 
and then stick a little extra thing on that has nothing to do with the rest of it. But it does. But it doesn't. But at the same time, it does. I think that something that's not been played with as much throughout Skylanders is the storyline. If we think about it, the first game was a standalone storyline. The second game was a standalone storyline. The third game was the first thing we got to a little bit of non-standalone because it had some older characters and introduced some newer characters. So, I mean, you know, it was sort of starting to kind of make a storyline. But really, story-wise, it wasn't that great. I don't think Swap Force really had the greatest story um, because it didn't progress us anywhere. Trap Team has done something no other Skylanders game has. It has given us a bona fide ending. A bona fide ending. Chaos. Hold on. This is chaos. This is chaos. What is going to be the villain if chaos is in here? What you gonna do when your main villain is literally wrapped around my finger or my finger is literally wrapped around the villain what you gonna do the only thing you can do is bring forth more villains light and dark sort of i'm thinking that the next game is gonna be glumshanks trying to unlock the rest of the light and dark that is what I think it's going to be. I really, really do. Because I saw the official unboxing, and it seemed to be very carefully worded what they were saying. So as to not give too much, but to not be completely inconspicuous. Something's up, guys. A plot twist is in the air. I can smell it. And that's saying something because I'm completely stopped up. I'm I'm kind of overwhelmed and I really don't know what to think about this light and dark, you know, storyline. I really want to play the Midnight Museum and um, uh, Sunscraper Spire before I do my live stream in January. Because I want to be able to talk about it. And I, I think it would be better for me to be able to play it and sort of, sort of see what it's all about, you know. So, uh, I'll leave it at that, and I'm going to have a much bigger, and I know this is 13 minutes right now. Um, I'll leave it at this, and I'll have some new stuff out, you know, whatever. Um, and I'll be compiling all my thoughts into the live stream, which is going to be like an hour to an hour and a half. And you guys can come on in and on the live chat over here, you can ask me questions and I'll give you a live response. So this has been Portal Master 9351. Again, I apologize for being stuffed up and having to take a sip of the water. But, you know, colds happen. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time, everybody. Goodbye.